So uh, again, the EDMA Association is designed around the old acronym of TEM. So in 1987, when I started my first company, it was called a Film Management Software Solution. We didn't have telecom expense management. So what I want to do is just kind of share some of the trials, tribulations, questions, concerns we have as fellow TEM companies with y'all. Um, one of the fun things about it was uh, last uh, conference, we talked about having SLAs. Who in this room would love to have SLAs and all their contracts? Exactly, nobody wants them, right? But one of the things that came out of our conversation was maybe it's a key differentiator for me versus Tulinian, right? To put SLAs in my contract, et cetera. So anyway, we just thought we'd uh, start up and up a few questions. Ask this to Steve Campbell to uh, share with you uh, all their kind of thoughts and ideas around them. And so I'll just go through a quick introduction of yourselves. I'll start with Peter. I'm Peter Yell with MHD Automation, um, the general manager for business unit. And we provide data processing uh, to the teams at TEM and other people who need process data. So basically, his organization is for those of us in the TEM marketplace want to have more readers and don't have the time, energy, or staff to develop them, whether it be domestically or internationally, because I don't know, how many of you guys read Japanese? Yeah. All right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So KDDI will not talk to you in English, they'll not read your bill in English, so that's what Peter's firm does. Great. Hi, I'm Craig McIntyre with uh, Telenium CEO, and of course we're a temp provider and a heavy drinker uh, at night. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, yeah. My name is Jason Cohen for Management Director of Design at um, We're a 10 mobile management service provider, kind of around robotic process automation uh, low code platforms. He talks robotic. Yeah. <laughs> he also is a McClinton. She was with Greg last night. So, first question we got. <laughs> question. Alrighty, so uh, one of the things that we were finding uh, is, is to have a commodity, right? So, for those of us who have seen the burger uh, price guy, right? They told us we should all be charging, you know, $1.50 for mobility uh, per device. They told us that we should be charging, you know, half of 1% for uh, managed TAM, waterline service, et cetera. So it's really pushed the, the price points down. So I guess the first question I'll ask you, Greg, is, is do you feel that, that our industry has been commoditized uh, or not? Uh, yeah, I think we are a commodity to a degree. And of course, there's been a lot of consolidation, but, uh, but to a degree, I think um, a lot of what we do or what we have done in the past is a commodity. And I think the future is going to change a little bit uh, as to what we do, where we go, with how the market has changed and circuits going away, which makes less complexity and um, things have to change. Sure. <coughs> Jill, any additional thoughts? Well, I think telecom is a commodity. I mean, lines, fiber, you know, all the things that we talk about. But I would say TAM is. Uh, I, TAM is a service. TAM is a, it's a, it's a support service. And when it becomes a commodity, So, so one of the other things too is that as we try to evolve, you know, one of the things is I go back to the old dial-up days where the cost per minute of a phone call was, who remembers 45 cents a minute, 30 cents a minute, the longest is called, right? Now we're sub penny. So for those of us who might be charging on a percentage of spend, those of us who might be charging on based on the workload and effort, et cetera, is, so what else can we do as an organization to help the enterprise? So I guess my question is to the panelists, what is next generation? Like, what are the things that we can do as we evolve, and the customers ask us to evolve. We heard from uh, the gentleman yesterday from Forrester about these new services and technologies and, and everything being a software as a service. So Jason, I'll start with you, is where should we evolve and grow? I think, you know, kind of going back to the commodity question and kind of mixing the two, I think it, it is, a, it is a, try to become a commodity and where we should go because it's clearly not a commodity because as everyone in this room, it is extremely difficult to do. So one of the things I think as a group we really need to do to, is promote what we're doing 
And the next generation is everything that we're talking about. Cloud, set, all, but all things that are kind of common sense, but very difficult to do, right? As you said, to process a bill in Japan, right? Like, it's not easy to do. So I think, you know, kind of both those th things have to be promoted as a group, not as a company, not as a silo. Like, this room is a collective group of, of this industry, it's a small industry, and nobody understands it, including the enterprise. And we struggle with that every day. So I think the next generation will lose the common sense things of what we're talking about. But we, we as a group have to make this not a commodity and do a better job of saying how complicated it is to do. Great. Peter, from a billing perspective, is, what are you seeing in terms of the changes? And are you being asked to now process additional bills outside of traditional IT or telecom? Yeah, definitely we're processing more outside of telecom as uh, uh, you know, expense management firms are taking on more than just telecom. They're going into utilities and other utilities to include waste and electric. Um, but they're also asking us to then provide a level of mediation on the data itself to support their wireless analytics. You know, next generation, they're trying to expand their platform to not just present the invoice, but to you know, provide analytics that the customer can then leverage to uh, better understand their spend. Greg, are you hearing from the customer in the enterprise asking to now help manage maybe license my O365 license? Absolutely. That's what we're saying. In addition to, of course, utilities, and I think a lot of the enterprises, one, they want to consolidate vendors, right? Uh, there's just too many. There's been a digital transformation, continues to be, but now you might have a utility vendor, you might have you know, telecom expense management provider, and, and, and now you've got all these licenses. Um, as the complexity of telecom, I guess it is telecom, it's a commodity, right? Uh, but as the complexity of all these circuits continue to go away, now I'm thinking of analog lines for your eyes, and as those continue to go away, subscription services are going up for everything. And they have them from all different vendors, and uh, and we should do the, you know, do the same with digital transformation. We call it management of things, right? So uh, within that same platform, holistically. <laughs> Subscriptions and devices. So MOT is the new term after the management of things. MOT. M-O-T. M -O -T. Yeah. But, but we own that, so we got to trade it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Feel free to use it. Yeah. 25 cents per use. Jason, what are you guys seeing out there in terms of the enterprise? Are they, are they asking for us to help them manage, track other areas? 100%. I mean, I think that the, any of the enterprises is huge. I think that the what I see in the enterprise is a very siloed, you know, you know, enterprise that they're not up to speed with how fast everything's moving. So for me, what I see is a very confused enterprise that doesn't know where all these categories of spend belong and who manages it. So I think again, we have to educate. They have to understand who really owns it. So everyone wants everything, but no one has the authority to do many things. So what I see is we clearly Everyone's asked for a lot of things, but they're not sure who owns that category of spend. Where does cloud go? Where does SaaS license go? Where's Teams? Where's VCAP? Where does CAM? What is CAM? Like it, it's it's a complete transformation going on in front of our eyes. And again, I go back to not as a company, as an organization, we clearly need to get in front of that and almost create best practices around where it goes and help the enterprise because I just see a lot of confusion out there. No, I agree. And I think one of the things is that we all want is a sticky client. That client is not going to want to leave. So the more value, the more services that we can put underneath our platform, they're not the traditional voice, data, wireless services will allow us to become more sticky. So I, I guess what I'll ask you is, you know, this last uh, 18 months has been challenging for all of us with the pandemic. How has the pandemic affected your, your business? Are you seeing more clients ordering internet or broadband for the home users? Are you seeing uh, different uh, practices or usage uh, areas within your customers as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, actually we, we have. We've had, um, you know, the first couple months last year, March, April, there was like, you know, kind of a complete, you know, hold on stuff. And then <laughs> there was a lot of uh, circuits being ordered. We did a lot of that last year. And then it started to, you know, and Kevin's services started coming back around again this year. So, um, yeah, well, I would definitely see the pickup. Um, you know, stuff has to move forward. So, you know, and, and they, the 
there's definitely different organizations that, that struggle with the whole work from home thing, you know, so they're kind of, you know, messing with, you know, the security, the, you know, the logistics of it, but, you know, eventually you just start ordering, so. So Peter, from, a, you know, one of the things that a lot of our tech partners here do is we do bill pay, right? So it's a great opportunity for us because now the AP team is no longer in the office and they look to us to actually pay the bills. I'm curious from a billing perspective, has the pandemic been a benefit for your organization because now you can help them process the bills electronically? Well, we're not really, my firm's not involved with the bill pay portion of it. Right, but in terms of the billing itself, as, as it used to increase the result of the pandemic. I've seen bills become larger. Right, we've seen the bills become larger, but we're not necessarily reading our client's data as it passes through. You know, we have almost a zero touch process. So unless the you know client shares with we look at the size of the file, but we're not looking at the specific data within the file itself unless it, it arises from issues. Gotcha. So I really can't answer that. So so one of the things that we, we you know all want to avoid like the plague is this thing called B Y O D or stipend, right? Because we could gain no no benefit from that. I, I'm curious, Greg, is, is, are you seeing any increase in the, the home user, right? Because now we're allowing these people to work from home. Is the corporation paying for Mark's broadband or is it a stipend? That's a good question. Now, we, we've seen a combination of both. So um, some of it was, uh, I think just initially, it's a, you know, it's a stipend right off the bat. Uh, a lot of them just say, okay, can people come home? Um, but we have seen the, uh, the enterprises um, covering that and bringing that into our fold as part of their um, you know, long-term expense because a lot of them aren't going back to the office or they only go back you know, half the time. And it's that way in my office, right? I mean, they, you know, everybody went home instantly one day. You know, everybody grabbed your shit and go home. <laughs> that, uh, you know, it, it takes so much time and effort to garner a new client. But there are those clients that just, frankly, piss us off. They're a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> so, Jason, I mean, you've been in this industry for a long time. Have you ever fired a client? I, I don't think firing clients what we've done, but I, I clearly, and I think this is the kind of systemic thing too, is we clearly have to get comfortable with the client to adapt a little bit to us because we're constantly, you know, we're a small company dealing with mama's company. So it's, it's, it's very <coughs> difficult for us in that headwind to stay strong. But if we don't stick to a process, we end up disappointing clients. So I don't think fire clients, but we're definitely trying to get tougher where follow my best practice. Do it this way. Don't do it your way because your way is clearly not working. So I think that, again, as a group, we have to get that conversation going. So it's, it's more of best practices because as a TEM, you know, expert, subject matter expert, you're dealing with hundreds of different companies and you see where best practices work. Is it more of you educating them on, hey, this has worked all our other clients? I think it's, it's, it's the, I would say, courage to stand up to a big client and say, yeah, we're not going to do it that way. Like, that's not going to work because in the end, I'm going to disappoint you. And that's the shift that is not easy to do. But again, as a as a group, if we could start, to, to, you know, what I'm talking about, a lot of folks here, if we could start to do that, it's going to make everyone's life easier because instead of adapting to their process, try to adapt a little bit to our process. As collectively, we've done hundreds of implementations. Super. So we all have in these MSAs termination for cause, right? And they also want to implement termination for I don't like your hair, hairs, um, or whatever the case may be, right? So, so I'm, I'm curious, Greg, is, have, have you had to, you know, tell a client, you know what, this just isn't working anymore? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, I don't know. one, specifically, and, you know, life's too short for assholes. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, 
Well, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it was a uh, relationship where this uh, smaller company acquired well, quadrupled in size by acquiring um, some lines of business from one of our large customers, right? And uh, and it was just a IT manager guy, and then suddenly he's a CIO, suddenly a big company, and just complaining about our charges all the time, no matter what it is. And I'm just like, this ain't working out, you know. And all my people are like, God, he's such a dick. Sorry, but he's such a dick, you know. And uh, I'm like, you know, like, and it's frustrating everybody, and I'm just like, this isn't working out, and uh, let's part of ways. And uh, it was a better form of time. <laughs> no? Just that we fired the client. So, it was very fun, too. Um, <laughs> now, I think, you know, mainly, and I think both, it's probably been three, um, they all have had a similar issue where they really just had such expectations of us being their lots of stuff that was just not in scope. Um, you know, a lot of repair, a lot of frustration with, you know, you need to help us, and we're like, well, you know, we're not your help desk, that's not what we do. And so, you know, the, it, w it was just too frustrating for us. It was like, you're too, too tough on our people, and then we're like, well, we're not gonna do this anymore. Yeah, so I just wanted to know one of the other things is that it, it takes so much time, energy, and cost to gain a new client, right? And so nothing worse than suddenly hearing from your client, they went out and did a bid, we didn't know about it, unbeknownst to us, so obviously they were upset because they didn't even include us in that RFP process, but but wh why would you say are the top reasons why companies leave their current temp? So Greg, you know, you've been in this industry for a while, it's, it's, what do you see it? Is it because you and I are losing our hair or what? What the hell, no, I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, they, they leave a temp company for another one? Yeah. Right? Um, luckily, other than the asshole, we, we, don't, <laughs> we, we don't lose customers. It's very, very rare. It's usually for an acquisition of merger. But we have gained them from you know, some of the others. Right? And, and, what, and what they, what, when they come to you and they're saying, I'm, come, I'm leaving this temp and coming to you because of? You know, but part of it is, it really wasn't the, the temp was necessarily bad. But they priced themselves so low that they couldn't provide the service that was needed to make the customer happy. You know, the customer had a different expectation than just posting one. You know, but that's all that Tim can afford to do, or they're just going to lose their ass. So the customer wasn't happy because of that. Um, sometimes there were some support issues that they could have, but it's all going back to that. Follow the money. You know? um, I think that that's what I've seen uh, from the ones that we've. So again, it sounds like they, they looked at it because, you know, 30 years ago when I got in this industry, there was no sourcing, purchasing departments that were doing buying IT software, et cetera, right? So now the, IT, the sourcing folks have, are really looking at price only. And so what I hear you say is when they look at the price and yet the IT director is expecting the town to do all this, they fell short of that because that wasn't part of the model. Right. And they paid more for us than they did the prior two tens that they had. Gotcha. And, and I think once they got over that hurdle of that, you know, I don't know if the platform was better or either, whatever, but I really believe it was a support issue and just not spending enough to get the service they, their expectations met. <laughs> and Jason, you've been in the industry for a long time. I mean, what, what you know, with a variety of different ten platform companies, what, what do you think is the reason why companies are leaving? I, I think it's the same reason we started in the beginning. It's a com people think it's a commodity, and if you don't get past this cost saving justification, I mean, you, I don't want to hear it. it, it, it this, if, if we don't show the value beyond just saving money, and people think it should just be free, it's never going to work. It's like, like it's never going to work. It's just common knowledge, right? So clearly, the reason is is because they have unrealistic expectation. We succumb to that and say, yeah, we'll do everything for you, and you have what you get. Like you get what you want for what you kind of reap what you sow, and that's kind of what happened. And then they're not happy because like they play Tim Mario, like oh, okay, I'll go to this one, and they're not happy, and they go to this one. So, you know, again, I think it's incumbent on us 
to turn that around. Well, again, it's not about assigning it, turning it around, because I can't. It's about as a group to say there's much more value in what we do. Stop it. I don't know if I'm going to say to you what I do. So I don't want to play that game. Sure. And, and walking away from deals, like I'm not going to give you a quantitative investment team because I don't know if I can do it. Because the industry changed. It's not 1999. Right. So I think that that is the reason that they just have unrealistic expectations and then they lose. So Jill, at, at 14, what, what, what do you see when companies are coming to you, leaving an incumbent Tim? Is not want to talk to us 
They'll instant message us. They'll go to our website. They'll look at our portal. So we don't have that ability to interact with them, right? Because that's just strange and foreign. So, so Jason, I guess uh, from yesterday or even as you, as you guys look and change, because I don't believe you and I are millennials anymore, how do we educate those folks? <laughs> I think that it, it comes to some of the things that, as a as a group, and, and maybe creating some best practices. It's like starting to show the world, not the enterprise, how we're defining today. Like this is the best way to provision the service. This is the best way to allocate. Like like what we're seeing, we don't collectively do. Just like you in the building, it's like you're this this concept. So you have to get that out. You have to get it out through the way that you know from Jay was saying it goes far. So it's like you get it, and then and then the other. Thing So any questions for the esteemed panels from the audience? <coughs> right? Uh, so, yes, you're the only one. You. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, so when all these people went home, right, and I don't know, I'm not from this side of, of billing and whatnot. They're home, they have their own internet. How do you handle the security? Like, how are they handling the security of that? Because their kids, you know, they're home now, they're trying to access their offices. <laughs> With all the cyber security issues right now, and the kids are downloading games and things like that, how do you handle that? Is that something that you even? So great question. So for those who may not have heard, is is as we now have these this work from home environment uh, that's coming into our network, how do we assure that you know the the children aren't using the kids aren't using our computer to infect viruses back on the network when I VPN in? I mean, to me, we're, we're again, it's not really. We, we can, we're the receiver of what the enterprise does. So the, the enterprise is way behind. So they, until they could get that information into the system, I don't know what they're doing for it, to be honest with you. Clearly they're trying to do things, but it's not a, you just turn it on, and all of a sudden those invoices, all that usage comes from it. So what I see is that it really, it, it dipped, it came back, but the enterprise is in this big adjustment period to figure out, they don't know how to handle it. So until they figure that out, we're at the tail end. Is that an opportunity, though? It's a great point. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the BYOD of the home worker, in my opinion, right? We don't want to, I don't want to give them a $50 stipend. I, I would prefer right. to say, hey, wait a minute, due to security risk, let's order them up an $80 Comcast, you know, 100 egg circuit, right? Yeah, and that's, uh, that's what we do. And of course, everybody wears uh, an enterprise malware bytes or whatever, you know, you have security software on there um, and uh, and then you lock things down with you know passcodes and stuff but then still they're sitting in there they're gonna get you know a cup of coffee or bathroom and they got a seven year old you know their cat or dog or whatever so there are security risks there now you know, yeah. unavoidable but you know lesson but it's you know great one other question I'll just throw out is just you know, one of the things we talked a little bit about yesterday was the, the BYOD, you know, years ago, probably six, seven years ago, the CFO would come and say, you know what, to hell with it. I'm not gonna pay a Tim, I'm not gonna have my help desk do this, I'm gonna go just pay him $100 a month, right? Which we all know is a great stipend, because now it pays for my phone, my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids, because I'm old. Uh, phone is good. So what, what do you see in sort of BYOD? Is, is that flipping? Is, is, or is it coming back to corporate life? And in terms of marketing or selling to that, Jason, I mean, what, what, are, what are you doing to to tell them, hey, no, we want to go away from that stipend or BYOD to a corporate liable? You know, I, again, the, the truth is I'm not really, uh, I'm, you know, I'm seeing the end result of that. You know, BYOD, you know, however you want to manage it, because a lot of clients have a combination and they're kind of transitioning. 
So, you know, I'm always saying that it's better to control the process you can lower your cost. You know, all the traditional kind of things that we all do, but again, it's an education, it goes back to everything the company, right? And we have to get to the right person within the company to put the proposal mobile and, and start to educate as a whole to keep the benefits. Gotcha. I'd say from us collecting data for, you know, several of our clients, we're not seeing a drop in line count. You know, we're not seeing the BYOD impact in that nature. Sure. So one of the other things is that the CIO, he or she is now looking for, not just within the U.S. or North America, but internationally. They want to know, what do I have there, too? So are you, are you seeing an increase in this? And, and I know, Jason, you guys are a global company. But are you seeing an increase in the request for not just North America, but I want to see the full globe? I would say that 100%. I think they've always wanted to do this. I think they've always wanted to consolidate, but it's been very difficult. Um, so uh, I'm seeing a huge increase in people wanting to bring international spend under one provider, right? But, but, but the challenge I see on that, and again, this goes back, is that because it's been like segmented, every process, every country, Latin America, every country does it differently. So it's a fight I see over the enterprise trying to fight to, to, to get all that. But I'm absolutely So Peter, I, I saw you nodding your head too on the, on the global international as a as a build processor, right? Because one of the things again is I, I don't read Japanese very well, but but what are you seeing in terms of the TAM marketplace and, and other you know U.S. based corporations <coughs> looking to aggregate, consolidate, and understand their services? Yeah, so we've got you know uh, clients that have definitely been consolidating their business units um, that have businesses across the globe. And, they want to consolidate and bring it bring it back as into one platform or two platforms. So we're seeing that migration. Um, we're seeing an uptick in, in that area. You know, do more international. It's still about twenty percent. Yeah, and I think with anything, you know, if if you can't see it, you can't change it and manage it. So if international, whatever it is. Um, and that's part of our job is to bring that visibility to them in an understandable manner, right? Bring that data to them. Otherwise, if you can't see it, you can't manage it, you can't change it. Yeah, the adage of you can't manage what you don't know, right? Exactly. Well, super. Well, uh, thank you very much, esteemed panel. Thank you all, and uh, see you all later.